Hello everyone, you are welcome to IDC Learning Center YouTube channel. For today's video, we will be looking at chemistry formulas you must know for JAM exam and application. Application here means I will be solving some JAM questions on those formulas. Please stay with me. The first formula is equation for density. We can see the formula here, D over M. So the density equation is density equals mass per unit volume. Let's look at the application of this formula. How do you answer a question like what we have on the screen? A solution of water and salt contains 25 grams of salt in 250 milliliters of water. What is the density of the salt water? Use density of water as 1 gram per milliliters. In this question, there are two masses. The mass of the salt and the mass of the water are both needed to find the mass of the salt water. The mass of the salt is given, but only the volume of water is given. We have also been given the density of water so we can calculate the mass of the water. So <clears throat> let's start by calculating the mass of the water, which we do not know. Since we are given density of water, let's use the formula for density. Density of water equal to mass of water over volume of water using our equation of density. <clears throat> To get the mass of water, we make the mass of water the subject of the formula. Let the density of water be over 1. Sorry. Okay. This is density of water over 1. So cross multiply. Mass of water times 1 will give you M equal to the density of water times the volume of water. So I just made the mass of water the subject of the formula. So the density in the question, density of water has been given as 1, okay, 1 g per ml times the volume of water, which has been given as 250 milliliters here, times 250, okay? So my answer, the mass of water will be... 250 grams okay now we have enough to find the mass of the salt water the mass of the salt water let it be total mass equal to the mass of salt plus the mass of water so the total mass equal to 25 gram the mass of salt okay it was given in the question plus the mass of water we we have gotten as 250 grams so the total mass will be 275 grams volume of the salt water is 250 milliliters. Now let's plug our values into the density formula. Density equal to mass over volume. Density equal to the mass, which is 275 grams, divided by the volume, which is 200. And 50 milliliters. The density will give us 1.1 gram per milliliters. All right, take note of this. The salt water has a density of 1.1 grams per milliliter. So, whenever you come across a question like this, this is what I expect you to do. Let's go over to temperature, okay? Now, the next formula we'll be looking at is formulas for 
temperature conversion. The first one is converting from Fahrenheit to Celsius, converting from Celsius to Fahrenheit, converting from Celsius to Kelvin. You need this especially for questions that has to do with gas law. The first question, how do you convert from Fahrenheit into degrees Celsius? We are going to use question 1 to demonstrate that. Convert 68 degree Fahrenheit into degrees Celsius. The formula is on the screen. If you want to change um, from Fahrenheit into degrees Celsius, Celsius is equal to degree Fahrenheit minus 32, okay, times 5 over 9. There's a formula you use to convert from Fahrenheit into degrees. Fahrenheit has been given as 68, so 68 minus 32, and the bracket, close bracket, times 5 over 9. 68 minus 32. It will give us 36. 36 over 1 times 5 over 9. 9 year 1, 9 into 36, 4. 4 times 5 will give me 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, for the B, or number 2, let's convert from Celsius to the Fahrenheit scale. I will be converting 20 degrees Celsius. What's the formula to convert to Fahrenheit? Degree Fahrenheit equal to degree Celsius times 9 over 5 plus 32. In this question, the Celsius is 20 degree. So we have 20 degree times 9 over 5 plus 32. 5 year 1, 5 into 20 is 4. 4 times 9 is 36. 36 plus 32 will give me 68 degree. Okay, now I've taught you how to convert from Fahrenheit into degree Celsius and how to convert from Celsius back to Fahrenheit K. All you need is these two formulas I've given you that you can see on the board on the screen. Okay, finally, how do you convert from degree Celsius to Kelvin? Very simple. Let's convert 20, 27 degree Celsius to Kelvin. To Kelvin, you use this formula here, Celsius plus 273, that's all. So 27 degree plus 273. Okay, so this will give me 300 degree or 300 Kelvin. All right, so I'm sure this is very clear. So practice them while we go to the third formula. The third formula is on percent composition of an element. Percent composition of an element. Now, the formula for calculating percent composition of an element, you can see it on the board, is atomic mass of element in the compound times number of atoms of element divided by molar mass of compound times 100%. Let's apply this so that it can be clear. Calculate the percentage of hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen in the compound H2SO4, sulfuric acid. Step one, let's bring out the atomic mass of the various elements that make up this compound. Hydrogen is one, sulfur is 32, that's the atomic mass, and the atomic mass of oxygen is 16. Next, let's find the molar mass of the compound. The compound is H2SO4. To get the molar mass, hydrogen, remember, is 1, that's the atomic mass, times 2 atoms, 
plus sulfur is 32. Okay? Just 32 since it's one atom of sulfur. 32 times 1. Plus oxygen is 16. But we have 4 atoms of oxygen. Okay, 1 times 2 is 2. Plus 32. Plus 16 times 4 will give me 64. Okay? So everything here will give me 98. Okay, gram. Okay, hold on. I think I'm minimizing space too much. Let me bring it up. Again, 1 times 2 is 2. Or simply, 1 times 2 is 2. Let me just continue. Plus 32 plus 16 times 4 is 64. I said if you sum up everything, it will give us 98 gram per mole. Now, remember the question says calculate the percentage of hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. Let's calculate the various percentage, okay, or the percentage of those elements. Let's start with hydrogen. The percentage composition of hydrogen, look at the formula I gave you. Atomic mass of element in a compound. Atomic mass of oxygen is 1 times number of atoms of the element. The number of atoms, H2, is 2 times 2 divided by the molar mass of compound. Molar mass of the compound is 98 times 100 over 1. Okay, 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 200 will give me 200. 200 divided by 98, if you punch it into your calculator, it will give us 2.041%. Okay. The percentage composition of sulfur will do the same thing. Atomic mass of sulfur is 32 times number of atoms is 1. Divide by the molar mass of the compound, which is 98, times 100. Again, if you punch this into your calculator, 32 times 1 is 32. So, multiply, um, divide 32 by 98, multiply by 100, you are going to get 32.65%. The next is the percentage composition of oxygen. Atomic mass of oxygen is 16, but then oxygen has 4 atoms. You can see it here. Multiply by 4, divide by molar mass of the compound which is 98 times 100. So if you punch this into the calculator, 16 times 4, divide by 98 times 100, it will give you 65.31%. And if you sum up all these percentages, you should get 100%. All right, this generally how to find the percentage composition of element in a compound. They can ask you to just find one element or two or three, but for this, we did for the three elements that make up this compound H2SO4. We are going to molarity. Molarity equal to most of solutes divided by liters of solution. But the question I'm about to solve to explain this, I'll be using a jam question. All right? So I want us to look at um, something different from this question we have on the screen. This jam question says, if one liter of 2.2 M sulfuric acid is poured into a bucket containing 10 liters of water and the resulting solution meets thoroughly, the resulting sulfuric acid concentration will be what? Now, whenever you see a problem on solution formation 
missing sulfuric acid in water and all that. The formula you need to use is this. Concentration A, CA, VA over CB, the second concentration, VB equal to number of moles of the first concentration divided by number of moles of the second concentration. Okay, so you can look up question for this, but this is really common with jam. Okay, for the, the first concentration, CA is 2.2 moles. Why the volume VA will be 1 liters? So I'll just use go to replace this. Concentration A will be 2.2 times volume A, which is 1 liters. Divide by now CB concentration B. This is the resulting concentration when it is thoroughly missed. We are not given, and that is what they want us to find times. But the um, volume for B is 10 liters. Okay, this 10 liters of water. So it becomes replace VB with 10 equal to now what is the number of moles if you write the chemical equation for this question the number of moles for the first component will be 1 and for B will also be 1 so we need to get concentration B let's cross multiply if you cross multiply 2.1 times 1 you get back 2.2 sorry not 1 equal to CB, which is what we are looking for, the resulting um, concentration, times 10. To get CB, we divide both sides by 10. 10 cancels 10. CB equal to 2.2 divided by 10, we give us 0 0.22 moles. All right. The next formula is gas laws. A lot of students like these laws, they like playing with these laws and solving a lot of questions that has to do with gas laws. The first um, equation here is for Boyce law and you use this formula for calculating changes in pressure or volume. P1 V1 equal to P2 V2. Now the next one is for Charles law which we use for calculating temperature or volume changes v1 over t1 equal to v2 over t2 why this other one is for calculating general gas law so we use this for calculation of changes in pressure temperature or volume of gas when n is constant so we have p1 v1 over t1 equal to p2 v2 over t2 now we are going to stop here for part one i'm going to continue from gas laws in the next video i'll be using um, some jump questions to show you how you can apply this formula and then we'll move on from there to other aspect of chemistry like formulas and application you need to know so i want you to please subscribe to this channel if you've not done so and i'll keep supporting you and to ensure you come out in flying colors in your jump and any other exam you are preparing for